Blood Hunt is a new free-to-play battle royale that is insanely action-packed, and I will get a tad into that here in a minute, but it is free-to-play on PS5 and PC if you want to give it a try, and I'm telling you, when I say action-packed, I'm talking some of the second and third. I can't really say circles because it doesn't really close in a circle. It closes in sections, which is another unique aspect about it. The second and third rounds are as intense as some other battle royales final circles, so it is an insanely fun game, and I highly recommend giving it a try try if you are on PC or PS5. Again, it's free to play. It's on Unreal Engine, and the guys that made the game are incredible. I'll link some of their Twitters down below, so definitely go and follow them. But I wanted to go into a bit of a settings guide today to help you guys get started if you are just getting started with this game, because there are some settings that I think you should go in and change and alter to your liking, or at least that can get you in the right direction to play the game how you want to in the best possible manner for you. Now this is going to lean a little bit more towards controller players. Now I say controller because you can play controller on PC. So if you're on PC or PS5 uh, and you're using a controller, of course, then this will apply to you. That doesn't mean PC players can't utilize some of these settings as well. So let's get into this. So on the first screen here under general gameplay, I do have auto swap default pistol selected. This is basically if you've already picked up a rifle and you go up and you pick another weapon, it's not going to swap the rifle you're carrying. It will just swap the default pistol automatically and I'll put that on the ground and you'll have both the new rifle and the old rifle or whatever weapon you decide to pick up, crossbow, whatever, it just automatically drops that. I think this should just be on by default. Definitely do not change it. I don't see a reason why you would want to have it off, but if you did for some reason, then go for it. It's much more efficient, much faster to play with this turned on. Enable hold to aim. I mean, hold down left trigger to aim. That, that shouldn't be self-explanatory. Um, I leave this setting on. Now rotate minimap, oddly enough, this is off by default and I kind of liked it this way. I, I found it because of the unique way that the map closes down. It, it Like I said, it doesn't close down in circles. It closes down in sections. I found that not rotating the minimap just gave me better sense of direction on the map to where I was going towards these different new sections of map for the next round. And I don't know, uh, definitely play with it. If you like rotate minimap on, go for it. But I would say give this a try because for some reason it just, it felt a lot better. I felt like I had a much better sense of direction in the game. Uh, enable crossplay, definitely. Uh, the player base is unfortunately not as large as some other larger AAA games, uh, but it is growing and it is getting more popular because of how fun this game is. So I leave this on for now and I really haven't had an issue on PS5 going up against PC players. It, it's really been just fine. I ha haven't had any frustrating games where it's like, oh God, a mouse and keyboard player or something like that. Now it, it plays pretty straight, pretty legit and it's a good time. And it also shorten your matchmaking times because most people have this on by default. Language, that's up to you, depending on the country you're in, what language you speak. Wireless controller, now this is where the settings get a little bit more interesting. I did put the horizontal and vertical look sensitivities both on three. Of course, this is personal preference. Some people will like a lower vertical look sensitivity than horizontal look sensitivity, just to help with easier recoil control. But I prefer consistency. I've, I've always played with sensitivities being about the same, so I've put them on the same thing. Same with horizontal and vertical ADS sensitivity multipliers. Just leave them at one, both consistent, um, both the same thing. Now I did up the horizontal and vertical scoped sensitivity multipliers. The 0.5 that it's at by default is a little bit low. Again, this is up to personal preference, although you may find it's a struggle because you have to kind of click on the line. It goes up by 0.5 if you just use the arrows. You have to click individually on the bar to find which uh, sensitivity that you want. Then invert Y axis, invert X axis. I left those off unless you just want to invert that you can. I think most people leave those off. Hold jump to climb. This is one I'm still debating on whether I like it or not. For now, I have it on. I just feel like it's a little bit more consistent to know that when I hold the button down, I'm going to start climbing versus if it's not on, you kind of run towards the wall and then a press can get you climbing, but sometimes you kind of leap off the wall. I haven't quite gotten that down, but right now, knowing that if I hold the button down, I'm going to climb. If I just press it, I will jump off. I think that's just a little bit more consistent, a little bit easier to get down, even if it is a tad limiting in terms of the movement capabilities that you will have. 
Vibration intensity. This is personal preference. Um, I have it up on one just because I like the haptic feedback. It doesn't really bother me on the PS5 controller, so I just leave it on that. Um, obviously, you can change that to whatever your preference. I think most people are going to turn it all the way off, all the way down, and you can again do it in increments, or you can just click on the bar and put it wherever you want. Enable slowdown aim assist. So this, these two aim assists right here, I'm going to get into these a little bit just to, I guess, kind of help explain why one is on and one is off. Now, slowdown aim assist, I feel, is essential for controller players, at least to get your sights on target so that you're not flying off of target automatically because sometimes in intense gunfights, it can be difficult to be precise if you don't have any form of slowdown. This is fine to leave on, in my opinion, but the rotational aim assist, I always turn off in any game I play. This is what you see in games like Call of Duty, and Warzone, even in Battlefield, it's gotten to that in other FPS games where it basically snaps to the enemy. So you aim down sights and if you're off a little bit to left, right, top, bottom, it snaps to the edge of their body. Now, can this help if you're new to the game, if you're new to FPS? Sure, it can help. The problem is, is it limits your skill ceiling and it limits your ability to put precise shots down range. The reason for that is it's, it's not gonna snap to their head, it's gonna snap their shoulder if you're off a little bit one way or another and that means less damage per second which means you're likely going to lose more gunfights and if you build the habit of having this on well you're just building the habit of losing more gunfights so i prefer to turn this off it may be tougher at first but once you get used to it i think you'll find that you'll be a better player for it enable adaptive triggers this i just leave on you don't have to have it on again i just like the ps5 controllers uh, adaptive triggers, haptic feedback, whatever it's called. It, it's really, really cool to feel it. It's not super prominent in this game I found, but it is definitely there and it feels really, really nice. Next, we're going to graphics. Uh, on the PS5, yes, you do have graphics options. I have it set to performance. You can change it to quality if you want, but I leave it on performance because even though I can only cap out at, uh, because of my capture card, I can only get up to 60 FPS. I'm not sure if it supports 120 yet, but if it does, this would be the way to get up to that 120 on the PS5. So I just leave it on performance. Uh, resolution, the game looks beautiful. It's on the Unreal Engine. I have zero complaints about it. It's fantastic. Brightness, I leave on 0.5. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to leave it on 0.5. I typically just change the brightness settings on my monitor, and it saves relatively consistent across most FPS games. For you, I would say if you want it up, kind of brighten some of those shadowy areas a little bit so you can find anyone that's potentially camping over here. It is a dark map. It can make it easier for you, but for me personally, I have found it just fine at the default lighting. Now, motion blur, film grain, and chromatic aberration, I turn off completely. These are just unnecessary things on screen that may add a cinematic effect, but as far as gameplay is concerned, they're unnecessary, and I would rather see my enemies than motion blur or little grainy pieces of film or chromatic aberration. Just, it, it makes it smoother, helps performance a little bit. So I turn those off. Now controls, unfortunately at the moment, we can't do anything about changing the controls. You would have to go into the PS5 settings and you can change your controller options there. That is what I do for most of my games. I don't have a fancy scuff controller or anything like that. I just have a regular old PS5 controller. So I do go into controller settings and I will change things like I'll put the aim down sights and fire on L1 and R1. That's what I do for most FPS games. Um, other than that, I don't really change much. Well. I do change the crouch and slide to the right stick so it makes it easier as far as movement. I can slide and still look around and shoot at people. Uh, that's really the only only thing that I change, just those two things. You don't have to do it. They did say that different controller settings are coming in the future. So if they could just put a, a default kind of controller setting where it does swap the O and the R3 button, that would be awesome. Um, same with flipping the triggers. I think that'd be awesome too. Uh, that would put a bit of a dampener on the haptic feedback, but it still it still works just fine. Audio, this is pure personal preference. Um, I put my audio mix on headphones. You do have the option for home surround, soundbar, night mode, or TV. I play with headphones, so I use headphones as the preset. 
And then there's voice chat volume, mic volume, so you can adjust how much you can hear from your teammates, or you can adjust how loud you are in the chat. You can also turn off voice chat if you want to. Uh, wireless controller speaker volume, the S5 does have a speaker on it, so you can turn that up or down, depending on how you want it. If you're, say, a streamer or something, and you're recording live gameplays, you might want to turn it down, because I know PlayStation is a little bit weird about that kind of a thing, uh, between splitting audio and whatnot, so you could be recording with gameplay audio coming out of the controller, and that uh, would obviously interfere with your dialogue. Now, the dialogue volume, you can turn this up or down, up to you, video volume, I'm not entirely sure what video volume is, uh, but I just left it on default. I have left a lot of the volume stuff on default other than changing the audio mix, just because I don't really have anything in this game that stands out so insanely much that I'm like, I need to turn that down. The music is great, sound effects are great. I, mean, I have nothing to complain about as far as audio in this game. So that is my console settings tutorial for you guys. Let me know down below if you have any questions about these settings in this game, what my setup is, or if you just want to know a little bit more about Blood Hunt. Again, it's free to play on PS5 and PC. Definitely give it a try. It runs fantastic. It's really not a buggy game at all. The movement is insanely fun. It is an extremely unique and action-packed battle royale. I'm telling you, it is some of the most fun that I've had with a shooter in quite a while. So definitely give it a go and let me know down below if you want to see more of Blood Hunt from this channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.